In this video, I'm going to be telling you exactly why I love Chat GPT so much, specifically using the 4.0 model. Since it came out, I've been using it for the past month, and specifically, I've been using the Pro version, and it's made such a difference to my workflow. Now, first off, I know there's going to be a lot of people who either watch this or in their own world or own opinion anyway, have different opinions about what is best. What is the best chatbot? Is it Claude? Is it Gemini? Is it Grok? Is it Perplex? is it you know I'm probably missing another handful as well so out of those ones already I've made videos about and I also really like is Grok I like perplexity and I like chat GPT I don't use the others as much and well Gemini I don't use period but the other ones that I have used I use them for different reasons in my opinion they're all gonna sort of be there and you as a person are gonna use them in the same way that you have a preference for shoes do you like Nike do you like Adidas do you like Reebok do you like Puma a shoe is still a shoe at the end of the day the foundation doesn't change large language models again to some extent are the same they follow the same narrative they are a large language model they'll offer different things and at the end of the day it's going to get to a point of what do you prefer you'll end up using a few different ones maybe you just stick to just purely one but like me i use a few different ones so first off is it worth paying for or should you stick to the free version well both of those points go into my first point actually they lead on to each other so point number one the free version of chat gpt offers immense value still just because it's not paid and you hear the word free doesn't mean it's still not valuable. Now with the free version, a lot of it, or large language one as a whole, it comes down to your imagination about how you can use it, how you can get the best out of it. So with the free version, again, that applies. I've wrote down some notes, but there are also a lot of different things that you could do that I've not even probably thought of and still yet to be explored. But one prompt you could put in, for example, into ChatGPT with the free version is, what are the best things you can do for me using the free version what are the, some some of the best overall things you can do on the free version the free account that's just a simple prompt that it will just tell you there and then and you can interact with it from there but these are some of the standout bits that i've written down and that i really like so for me the free version allows you to do a lot of things like i've just said specifically coding that it has the ability to remember conversations so you can go in there and sort of feed it like a knowledge base so it'd be sort of a thing of it like a gpt uh, like a custom GPT that you're building up with knowledge, but it's gonna remember it over time. So you can't necessarily upload direct files to it, but you can still talk to it. You can still tell it that information. You can literally go to a PDF file, copy and paste all the information and paste it into ChatGPT instead. Same thing, instead of just uploading the file, you're uploading the info directly, press enter, it will remember it. It also allows you to do script writing. Two things there when I say script writing, script writing is in code writing. Uh, I don't really have a lot of experience with that. That's not really my world, but again, from what I've seen and the reviews of it, it looks really, really good. So it can do that, but also literal script writing, like for like this, like a video, writing out a script, writing out high value scripts on your content again you could do that by feeding it in the, the information tell a bit about your channel or whatever type of content you make and it will go from there it also has the ability then for example to do um, prompt generation so you can ask it to take a prompt and then again you could say build out this prompt make it better so another way of looking at that you could teach yourself to learn things to learn how to prompt better again this is all free overall is down to your imagination to some extent you how you research it, how you play around with it but it can do all of that for you and i think it is just offers immense great value so point number two then is from the free version to the paid version now the paid version is a step up and for 20 dollars a month I think it offers a lot of value. Again, it depends what you're using it for. So first off, the fact that you get access to the latest GPT models. So now that is GPT 4.0, you get access to the AI image generation, you get access to the GPT store, you also get access to the, or the ability even to create your own GPTs, which I think is a standout feature and something that is massively overlooked, or at least from what I can tell. But also what I really like is then you have the ability to upload files, which allows you to access the um, the files and interact with the files in a different way. Now, whether that's a PDF file or whether that's uploading a, a literal picture of something and asking for that to be described to you or anything like that, 
I think that is a massive, massive thing and that has helped me so much. The other thing that I really like as well is the fact that you can give it hard data and then you can say with that data or whatever, I want you to basically take that and put it into a downloadable PDF file for me that I can just quickly take, download, have the information done. Then you can also say to it, well, I want you to make the PDF file look like this, look like that, give it a reference image. Same again, like you can do with the AI image generation with DALI. I just think all of that is so, so, so good. And other people who are just gonna use it as more daily users for a bit of fun or the odd prompts here or there, then you should stick with the free version and save you money. Now, the next one is being able to use GPTs. Now, I remember when GPTs came out and the GPT store came out, they were advertising it as something you could make passive income from because you could sell your GPT model and people would obviously pay to use it and it would be passive income if they paid to use it. Now, in my opinion, it hasn't really taken off the way it was shown, at least from what I can tell. Maybe I'm missing something. I mean, please let me know in the comments down below, but from what I can see, it hasn't really taken off in that way. And it's sort of just been left on the side. I mean, it's there and it's cool, but it's not really doing much. But what I love about it is two things. The GPTs that are on there, some of them are incredible. You have ones that allow you to specifically interact with a PDF file. You have other ones that allow you to be like a gym trainer, that allow you to be a um, sort of CV expert and off of those, I was inspired to make my own GPTs because how can I utilize it? Well, let's look at it another way. If I can create a GPT that is specifically built on my brand, so let's say Dishy Dan Media, which is my freelance stuff where I do weddings, events, stuff like that. Well, if I can build a GPT model that knows the ins and outs of my business, my brand, my voice, my tone, how I speak, how I advertise, what I want to sort of push, what I want to sort of achieve with all of that. And instead of having to imagine, let me put that another way, but let's call that person a business manager or something. Well, chat GPT, that custom GPT is now my GPT manager because I fed it that information. The cost is of time on the front end is that you have to put in a lot of hours depending how good you want the GPT model to be and understand your, your business, your brand. But once you put that in and it understands it, wow, is it something different? And I cannot say enough how much of a game changer GPT models are. Then put that with the real-time access it has to the internet, to its understanding of the large language models as a whole. It is a very powerful tool and I love that. I spend a lot of time on that and building my own GPT models is something I like and I may make a separate video about it. I'm not really sure how I'm gonna present that yet, but it's definitely something I'm planning to make videos about in the future. And then number five, which is the final one, is sort of a mixture of the two. That's AI image generation, but it's also its overall usability. It's very user friendly. The interface is very inviting and I find it very easy to navigate around. It's detailed, yet it's refined. It's not over cumbersome and it's just very nicely laid out for me. And I find it very, yeah, just very inviting to use. So first off going on the user experience, I would say is yeah, like just building on it and I'm gonna repeat the same point, but easy to use, friendly, inviting, easy to navigate around. They make it very clear and specific what things do. And if you need help, go here. If you don't need help, do this or that. But I just find it overall inviting and easy. And that's how I think it should be. And again, if you're a person who's sitting on the fence right now, who's just indecisive and doesn't know whether to do just the paid or the free, well, I'll help you. The first choice, free, you literally put your email address in and it's free, play around with it. It's gonna cost you nothing but time, do it for fun, get a hands-on feel for it, play around with it and test it. Just see what it can do. Like I said, put in that prompt, what are some of the best things you can do in the free version? And it will tell you, just have fun with it, play around with it. But then if you are a person who is on that fence, but then you have a job that is maybe in uh, the tech sector with coding or video or image or social media, something, then the paid version is definitely something that could help you further down the line, but the free version can also help you with that as well. So that's where I am at. And I think $20 in the big scheme of things, again, $20 is still $20. Would I live with that? And I think it's worth it. Yes, personally, I think it's worth testing it out because if you don't like it, well, then you can cancel and go back to the free version and that will always be there. But let me know what you think in the comments down below. I really appreciate your time and you watching this. Thank you so much and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.